That's fine. Look, hey, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are going to witness probably the most anticipated match of this entire split. It will be between two of the heavyweights in our league. It'll be between two of our best teams and fighting out of the red corner is going to be the only undefeated team left in the league. They are hive, but they are going up against a team that shows no fear in the face of adversity, a team looking to make a statement that they are the best on the block, the beast of the East. They will be fighting out of the blue corner. They are <laughs> E-United! Hey! <laughs> okay. I need that I need that hanging mic, by the way. What, what about do... the other what about the other corner? And I want to know how much they weigh. Okay, so Hive, I'm gonna say, is probably at a combined weight. <laughs> uh TJ's a little skinny. TJ's a little skinny. Okay. I'm gonna say Solar's Solar's has got Solars has got some muscle mass to him. So I'm going to say the combined weight, I have four of them on the squad. I'm going to say 723 pounds. There's four humans on that roster with at least, at least weighing 150, <laughs> at least weighing a buck 50, my mans. So I'll I'm put you on the spot for that. Fair enough. Okay. I'm going to say, though, if I'm giving E United a weight class, I'm going to say it. Just by the amount of trophies they got to put on a scale with them, it's at least two tons. <laughs> it's at okay. least two tons on that scale. With okay. all the hardware, they'd be hanging and slanging out there. <laughs> hey, fair enough, man. All right, check it out, Colin. What an epic intro. And I just had to sit here. It was kind of weird. I'm not going to lie. I, I'm not I'm not used to just sitting here anymore and just taking it all in, which, which makes me believe I need to cut my intros down because that was like 30 seconds just staring at the camera. And I didn't know what to do with my hands or my face. <laughs> By the way, a United uh, social media manager is, is being uh, uniquely very happy in chat. Uh, it's, it's different. Check it out. Let's get it going. It's going to be a great series. Hive and E United. So what do we have going on here? What storylines do we have to talk about, Colin? Well, Hive is the only undefeated team currently right now in the league. Like I said, we started with like three of them or four now, of course, only Hive remains. Will they be able to hold on to that? Well, we'll definitely see in this matchup. Whereas E United, though, is arguably one of the best teams currently in the scene, uh, especially now. And this is where I think E United is definitely going to thrive, and they understand the position that they're in. So this is not going to be easy. But also, Hive is playing with a new player. And, uh, you know, we have to talk about him at least over time. And that's going to be Hefe. I say new. Now, I know Hefe is kind of joining back into the mix with the Hive roster. We have that storyline. But then we also have the storyline, of course, of Powers. Powers is aiming for the 1,000 kill or be the first one to reach 1K kills. 889 currently is where he's sitting. At the start of the day, he set in first place. I'm pretty sure he still is in first place as of now. Monkey's had an impressive showing, but I don't know if it was enough to surpass him. With that being said, Powers could very well get very close to the tipping point and reach 1,000 kills by tomorrow. If not, I don't know. He could have an incredible night tonight and reach 1,000 kills. You don't no, but that's another storyline that's going on. And Powers is going to be incredible tonight without question. Powers, and, and I don't think, one of the things that I think people are going to misinterpret from this graphic when it comes to a guy like Powers, you are not going to see Powers get fed kills to get him to a 1,000. He going to take them kills, whether you want him to or not, because he takes every fight because they have, again, really done a fantastic job lately of rotating powers around the map, putting him in a position to be the tip of the spear, to be the guy to get that initial damage or to take a shotgun fight with a little bit of Lancer help over the top. That has been kind of the key to their success, the key to them sure. dominating a lot of these maps lately. So I don't see that slowing down anytime soon. I don't see that becoming any kind of hindrance to their game plan tonight. They're going up against a Hive team that might find a familiar face on their squad, Try but it. their genetic makeup is a bit different. They can't be as aggressive. They can't have as many players in the fight. There's going to be a lot of pressure now on a guy like Inzem, on a guy like TJ, especially right. Solars now, because Solars back, when he had them guns on the other side of the map, his 1Vs, they were pretty serious, but they were not the end-all, be-all. Now, with Jeff having to try to get some of them shots in, those support player uh, roles where he's trying to lancer out for his teammates, Solars is the do or die in a lot of situations. 
Let's, t- let's take a look at our pick and bands, and you bring up some great points. Three incredible players joined by Hefe now. Training grounds, Vascar, and District. So Vascar, no surprise. Uh, I could have called that even without even looking at it. United has been preferring that map. They're a great team on said map, and Hive traditionally is as well. But curious to see how they're going to fare tonight playing with the new addition of Hefe. Training grounds, though, be in map number one. Interesting. So Hive is a great TG map, or excuse me, a great TG team, but without questioning United, I mean, come on, they're incredible on that map as well. So from what I'm looking at here, Hive, I mean, EU United is obviously the favorite. Like, I think we can both agree on that. But Hive is in a position now where they've kind of got to not necessarily relearn how their team composition needs to be on each map, but they need to readjust how they want to play each one. And that's going to be the big thing. And I think one of the things that you're going to see early is Hive are going to have to figure out their lane, their lane priority very quickly they're gonna have to know where those lancers are out at and where they're going to be able to take these fights around the map because if you get overzealous over aggressive with the way that they've got to change to their makeup they could find themselves down and down bad very quickly and so this is going to be a tough test tonight let's see if the metal of hive is tested and comes true We'll definitely find out. Let's go to our predictions, Colin. Talk about it. Walk uh, walk the people through it. Last time we did this, we were very wrong. So let's try it now once again. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to go for the team of EU United. And the reason is very simple. First and foremost, they've been looking incredible. Albeit, now, I hate to bring up a sore spot when they played against Pittsburgh Knights, right? Uh, the, the week prior to this one. So that that is a sore spot without question. But I don't think that necessarily reflects the skill set EU United still brings to the team. Table. Plus, you also have a new addition of Hefe. Even though he does have chemistry with this roster, I still expect there to be some learning curves that aren't necessarily going to be easy to overcome with the competitors such as E United that they have tonight. So, E United is my favorite. What are you thinking? There's only three things in life that are certain, Taylor death, taxes, and Colin picking E United, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you pick PK one time though? Nope. Okay. It happened. All right, fair enough. I've never. I, I don't pick against them. All don't right, fair them, enough. <laughs> so E United. So, all right, hey, and you know what? E United was complimenting your polo, man, saying you're wearing EU colors. So you hey, came prepared hey, look, tonight. They, they know that I. There's a look. Little known, little known side fact about your boy. I like to represent teams that I think are going to win on the night. I used to do that on land on Sundays. I'd always wear the colors of the team I thought would eventually win the championship. Didn't know that. Okay. That that's nice. That's nice. I, I like I that. I wore so. a lot of green when I first started <laughs> and then it changed into orange. All right. Fair enough. To- <laughs> yeah. Well, how'd you put, well, either way, I'm curious how you pulled out the green in, in a tux or in, in a suit rather, but Hey, chat, tie, where baby. are you going with E United? I was thinking oh, a man. green tie, but I, a green tie, I, like a I, nice emerald green tie with that. Okay, gold emerald. Tie. I'm yeah, thinking, like I'm a, thinking like bright, like neon green. No, not I don't the know neon, why. No, I just green. It's just green. I couldn't go nuts. <laughs> I'm thinking, with, how can right? you pull? I'm like, how can you pull that off? They got enough <laughs> you, bricks in that wall. They don't need me to be exact on colors. <laughs> all right. Fair enough. Fair enough. Or at least you'd be safe on St. Patrick's Day. At least back then. Hey, check it out. It's going to be an incredible night. E United Hive last series match of the week. Let's get it started on training grounds. Are we going to have that overlook fight to 3v3? I think we might. Yes, we will. So this is going to be a big gut check. And so where's our boy Hefe at? Where's the new addition? He's going to be on the opposite end of the map, fighting that 1v spot against Praise. Tough spot to be in, especially being reintroduced in a pro league. And and Praise is going to be able to take over that B hill momentarily. Hefe is going to try to push in a little bit of red. Praise trying to go wide. Hefe with a little miss roll right there. Triple gap domination being threatened momentarily. And E United, they're off to the races. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. Triple cap domination, 35 seconds. Yeah, that's uh, that's going to be tough. I, you know, talk to me about this, Colin. I want to hear your expertise with, uh, again, Hefe being reintroduced. I, I know he's competed in Challenger Series. I know he's definitely competing in Challenger Series, but he's not been scrimming or performing at the pro caliber level for quite some time. Since, I'm very uh, curious to know. Do you think it was the right call to put him in the 1v spot against Praised? 
it's the spot that hurts them less because what they're probably experimenting with right now is can we put solars can solars become a super slayer with Enzem and, and tj up in the front lines of the battle and let's see if hefe can live long enough to buy us time to be able to get these uh get these kills get these hills and, and make the right rotations around the map and right now that first round it proved not to pay off for him yeah, definitely not. Well, he's going to give it another go. Oh, now he's in a 1v2. Hits a nice shot, though, on Praise dropping hill, but even so, forced to retreat with the help of Solars, which uh, you can use all the help you can get. Hive still has a presence on Overlook. There is an opportunity they can push it onto Kinney, force that 1v2. I say that, but Enzim does back off. They want this control. They want to get praised and powers out of this spot they're not feeling comfortable with them there i don't blame them they have somebody in their house they got to get him out of the way praise now forced to retreat back he goes over towards god spot hefe they're looking to get him out of that spot alongside his teammate of enzim they angle him out he's gone hive at this point now is going to be able to pressure in onto tj he's out of the way excuse me kenny is uh, going to be dropped as well hefe goes in for the cleanup he's not going to get it a lot of moving pieces but the big thing to look at is that hive does take the two to one but they're down a pretty decent amount of points they are a decent amount of points down but they, they've got the positioning they've got powers at god spot he's gonna be able to answer back against Enzem here there's the heaven player. They get praised into the B Hill, who's going to be able to get this decap off pretty easily. And they have every everywhere you go, somebody from E United is going to be able to lancer you out. So you don't really have a place to go if you're a player for Hive. You see them pushing up. DJ will be trying to slide into that cover. He's going to go down. Trying to get into position, trying to get that kill to be finished off his powers. But you're going to see him rotate toward the back street now. This is going to be interesting as Kenny will have a 1v1 up top gonna bounce around just trying to look for somebody to get caught slipping hefe he's gonna be on the e united side of the map trying to get snuck up on by kenny kenny with the double shot down and the kill 4v3 effective on the map dj is gonna be waiting for explosive push up misses that first shot pretty much a big whiff but now you see them pushing through they're gonna go for this decap i think over on the a hill but it's gonna be too little too late really for hive because they're gonna have to get all the way to see if they want to win this round as they are up over the 235 point marker this ladies and gentlemen will be a 2-0 e united lead here coming up shortly so i understand hefe is a new addition to the roster but even so with the three members of hive i something seems off they're not performing as intended or at least as you would think granted a longer round in round two but you have to go back to that first round how quick it was look across the board the only one with the kill is solars that's that's tough that's tough it's it's one of those situations where they're having to refigure out when i when i tell you their genetic makeup is different it's it, they have really got to go back to the lab and figure out exactly what they can do around around the maps, how they can play around each other, play off of each other. Hefe is a great support player, but I don't know necessarily if he's the 1v1 guy. I really expected them to leave Solars in the 1v1, allow, uh, allow Hefe to uh, Lancer out, shoot for TJ and Insem in those, in those early initials, in those shotgun fights, be mm -hmm. able to take those abilities. But this is just not this is not working out well for him, and it is pretty obvious right now that that Hefe needs to get a lot more practice. And they need to be, I mean, day in and day out, they need to be on the grind as hard as they can go. Nose to the grindstone, nose to the Blarney Stone, whatever it might be. Fight could go a little bit better on Overlook for the boys of Hive at this point. They are definitely trying to work their way around, but Enzim's gonna fall. TJ or Chumi Solar's now is gonna be isolated by himself. The 1v spot was lost by Hefe, and that's going to put a United in the spot to, or position, I should say, to potentially get an overextension and a domination. But with the death of Kinney, at this point, a United is just going to go ahead and bunker up fair enough. Force Hive now to make that next move through that choke point. And that's the right call. That's exactly what they need to do at this point. Now are they going to be successful in doing so? Explosive is going to be at the forefront. Utilities out. He understands the cavalry is going to be coming through. The Lancer fire is going to help put them within chunk range. But they're hot on his hills. They take him out pretty much with ease, and that's an easy retake, and that's going to force Powers in a tough spot of 1v3. Powers, he's going to see three people just... Like everybody's just kind of looking at him because they know that he might up A, but he just takes his death, and he, he said, I'm going to have to move on with my life. Hefe is going to get shot on from behind. Raze is going to be able to finish him off here momentarily. It's going to be 3v3 on the map. 
Praise actually backs all the way up and gets the decap. There's a retro there, Praise. Thank you, sir. I was about to say, can you not see that? Am I am I blind? Have I lost <laughs> no. it? No, you definitely have it. You definitely have it. Interesting. So E United with a 70 point lead at this point. Solar's good elimination onto Kenny. Can he get the second onto Praised? He cannot. Team pickups there actually, but either way, a lot of work to be done. A tremendous amount of work to be done. And that right there is a great start. TJ will take down Explosive. And player six is gonna rotate over towards B. Hive trying to sneak in a domination, but that's pretty much their only chance at this point. Praise trying to bounce up, trying to get into the area. This could be a high round as they threaten this triple cap domination. Nice. nice. They're going to get these kills. They're going to finish this off. It is going to be a 2-1 round count going into the last round of the first half. And I think one of the things that we've got to be concerned with for E United is, is if you give Hive that, that momentum, if you give Hive the, the ability to kind of play off of one another, give them that that spacing they want, let them have the fights they want to take. They are they are no slouches. The, those four guys are still great players in mm -hmm. their own right. They've all still got a lot of skill in this world. Shock grenades are going to come out here momentarily, and this will be the last round of this map where you'll see that B hilt down at the range of the two homes at the DB Depot and the Monument before they flip across. I'll be curious to see how they decide to take this next initial. As, as you saw, United, they were kind of spread thin early, and it comes back to haunt them as they can't really uh, string together a bunch of kills. Yeah, I, I maybe they were trying too much. Maybe they were getting a bit too confident, but now they will try something a bit different, much like Pittsburgh Knights was doing earlier in their series. They played against Elevate. Looking that they send three over towards B, but one by one they start to drop off and Hive did a great job at reacting to what was being thrown at them and they are going to punish United tremendously as Hive will take the uh, early lead. Explosive. Kind of caught out in no man's land. He's just going to kind of just stay alive as long as he can. Kenny, also same scenario. Full red now brought back with the hell. Shock is down, but Enzim still able to take him out. And uh, Hive looking pretty solid unless the United can take control once again. That's a start. Powers taking on Solars. And Powers is going to go down. He's going to try to crawl into B. Here comes a couple of hops. They're going to be able to get the revive off on him as well. So they save his life. See Explosive rotating over to the top side of that Heaven spot. They're going to have to try to go for a retake at their home. He should be mounted up here with the player. They're going to throw out flashes over at Kenny. Here comes Explosive and Kenny back into the fight. Explosive bouncing around. It's that first line of defense. He gets angled out just a little bit. He's going to go down. There's the quick pickup. Powers is on the flank. Powers is going to go down now after getting a couple of downs. Third down and out. Will be taking effect on Inzem. TJ's going to get killed by Kenny. And you see them off to the races now. Pushing back toward the middle of the map. I will have two players set up here at the Overlook. Solar's going to continue to back up. Solar's is trying to get a call out here on Explosive. Bump Explosive. Turn tail and go to that player. Angle him out. They get the kill. And Explosive is going to go down just in front of these stairs. But thankfully for E United, Praise is there for the revive. Solar's with one kill. My God, Solar's is so good at this game. So Solar's is incredible. He put the hood on as he normally does. And he continues to pull up. I think at this point in time, he understands that he needs to play at a superhuman level. Enzim 2, even though he is uh, has zero kills, he does have the four depths, but obviously he'd be uh, faring off a lot better if he can pick up an elimination. This is his opportunity. Couple shots onto Explosive, but with the distance. Oh, Explosive head down, tries to get the finish, gets one at least. Solars now is going to be gone as well, and Praise will take him out, and A is in his line of sight. Does he push for it? Yes, he does. It's, it's a pressure offense at this point. Over 200 points. You can pretty much stay right here. You're, you're, you're knocking on death's door. You're threatening the triple cap domination, but you don't need it. And look at the way E United is baiting them out. They're playing this game where they're going to have to fly across the sea hill. You're going to have to try to make a miracle happen. Praise gets one more kill and gets the decap on A. That makes it easy peasy, lemon squeezy. That's 3-1. Headed into the second half. E United are in the driver's seat at map number one. Yeah, absolutely. In the driver's seat, looking incredible. Let's not forget, uh, this is Hive's map pick, right? Coming up next will be Vascar United's pick, and uh, you have to think they're going to be faring off quite a bit better. Being down, though, 3-1 is Hive. What is the answer in return? Seems like maybe business as usual. Pick up those Boltox, but the shocks are in play, and this uh, is, is going to be one of the few times now that we are going to get to see a big 3v3 we battle. Again. We've seen it in the past, but I expect a lot of emphasis to be placed down low 
uh, or up top, I should say, instead of that Overlook fight, I think it's going to be taking place right around the neutral potentially, but no, United is going to go head uh, first straight into Hive on Overlook. So let's see how this goes down. Enzo's going to be leading the charge. Powers is going to go for straight in though. No respect. The shock is going to separate them and great eliminations. That was a beautiful job by Powers. Just try to avoid a bunch of shots, sliding around, bouncing around, not giving anybody the easy kill. That is going to be a fantastic initial for E United as they will get three out of four dead on this initial and have the ability to try to pressure this F hill, but they're not. Look at the way E United is playing. They're pulling back. They're going to make sure that they play this more carefully than aggressively to try to make Hive make a bunch of mistakes later in this round. I just don't know where you take this push because the way that E United set up right now, they have somebody at the Overlook who's going to be able to answer you as you push toward Powers. And any damage that you have done to you before you get to Powers is going to really really make it easy for him to get one-shot chunks sure. on you, maybe even down. It's going to be explosive to have being the Guardian Angel that playing that top position. Here comes a flash. So powers is down. That's going to alleviate some pressure. Explosive, though, at the forefront, picks up one, picks up two, and the third is gone as well. Beautiful job, and to boot, Kenny is also already at the home hill of high, forcing Hefe off in a tough spot. <laughs> Just a cavalry of the United members pushing up on him, and that's going to be a 4-1 lead for E United. They continue to look absolutely unstoppable. I mean, they are ju they're taking advantage of the openings that Hive are giving them, and that is just one of those situations where that's what you have to do. I, again, a lot of people in my life always kind of get it twisted. They always look, oh, well, this team's easy, that team's easy. These are pro teams at the end of the day, and all you can do is play your schedule. You can't change your schedule. You can't change the players in front of you. All you can do is take it round by round, fight by fight, player by player. And E United has done a perfect job of that in this matchup against Hive. And one of the things that they're doing that really puts them, that really separates these two teams right now is E United's ability to get a secondary player in the fight. You're not seeing a lot of 1v's one. You're seeing a lot of extra damage in the back, some shotgun shots out, making players miss. It's just been so good for E United. They have really put together a showcase in this map number one. Absolutely have, and this is their chance to uh, put the final nail in the coffin, head into your map pick, and that's going to give them all the confidence in the world. Powers has been playing absolutely incredible. His aggression is truly unmatched at this point. He goes straight into Solars, but I guess sometimes, uh, man, you never know. You're just going to get chunked in the end, and Solars is able to take him down. But even so, that's only one hill for Hive, and living inside Hive's basically spawn is going to be praised. Another one's going to be joining into the mix. That's going to be explosive, and Hive can't feel comfortable. This pressure is unrelenting, and it's been this way throughout the entirety of the six rounds we've witnessed. See, explosive, he has some help. They have two towns, and both of them bleed out right now, but they're basically, again, in the spawn. This is where you were saying E United is living basically right outside the spawn. Of Hive, Solar's still taking every fight he can at the E Hill. The flank is coming out from E United. They're trying to move into position quickly. Praise will get the up A on him. TJ's going to be up on the Overlook. He's all by himself. He's going to go for the up A there on Explosive, but the extra angle from E United once again. All you got to do is find a teammate, shoot for him. They're doing such a good job at it. They're making life miserable for Hive as they rotate around the map. Kenny continuing to play defense, backing up. He has no help. Hive did have the extra shot over that cover from the heaven position across the map. Didn't kill onto him. Home to home stretch now for Hive. Will be enacted, but they are down by 80 points, and I don't believe that's going to give them the win condition. I don't think it will, and uh, we'll find out very shortly. No, I, I mean, he can't. E United has such a tremendous lead. No, it does, actually. But just barely, you have to think. And any hill that gets broken or decapped, for example, with it being F, and that's going to be a full cap, mind you. Yeah, E United is 100% going to have the win condition. And matter of fact, they're even going in for the domination. Yeah, call it quits. Player 8 isn't even going to run for it. That is going to be a dominant 5-1 victory. E United taking map 1. 5-1, and that's just it's one of those things that you got to look at the way E United played that. They played it picture perfect. They never gave Hive any place to go. They could not. They, there was nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Stat lines picture perfect for E United from top to bottom. 
And I'm pretty sure somebody just uh, gifted 10 tier one subs in the chat. I'm sorry. I know it's pro league, but I got to, you know, poggers. <laughs> Lo loved macaroni out there. Hey, shout out to you, brother. No, shout out to loved you. Loved macaroon. It's not macaroni. It's love. Is it macaroon? macaroon? I, he gives 10 and then I butcher the name. Are you kidding me? I apologize. And, love and macaroon. Worse, if loved macaroon is who I think it is, it's not a he, it's a she. And she's, she's connected to some of our biggest content creators for a lot me, of you out there that probably don't know. Love this, macaroon I apologize. Is, is tight with those. Well, she's tight with the, the big wigs in the content creation world. She's tight with uh, Star Spawn and Shadows and Landon and uh, that group of guys that make great Gears content. So shout out to the 10 gifted in the chat. Big love from me to you. And now you see hey. some beautiful highlights from me, United and Hive. Matt love Macaroon. I apologize. I truthfully do forgive my ignorance. Hey, yeah, I, I think this is going to be an EU United top five at this point. Or not top five, excuse me, replays. But... I mean, again, they played well, and, and you know, you expect teams that make roster changes to struggle. You really do, and and Hive is clearly struggling with this, uh, you know, with Hefe joining into the mix, and, and it's not just, it's not all on Hefe, that, that's quite truthfully uh, not the case. It, it's just, like you said, the team composition is different. You know, the way that they have to play, the way they engage, uh, their strategies, just everything is totally different, and it's a big adjustment period. It truthfully is, and to try and adjust you know, coming back with a fresh roster going against EU United, it's, it makes the job pretty much impossible. Yeah, it's going to make the job pretty much impossible. We see here going into map number two, uh, E United and Hive are going to settle this out here onto Vascar. And this is going to get even scarier because training grounds, you pretty much have a lot of uh, solidified roles, positions that you roll out of spawn, try to look for places and positions you're trying to get into. Vascar, as everybody knows, it is the horse track, ladies and gentlemen. That is a rotation <laughs> heaven put it. type map. You are <laughs> running around trying to keep your head down before you get it blown off into the next century. I just can't wait to see how Hive tries to take this because, again, Hive with the addition of Hefe is going to be a very interesting map number two because they're going to have mm. to find a way to, to keep him, I don't want to say safe, but keep him out of the front lines to where you're not relying on him to win you a bunch of fights. Yeah, I don't like saying that. Keeping him safe because then that, that at that point it becomes a liability. You know, at, at that point, it's like almost like protect the VIP, which, you know, you need Hefe to be able to do what and I did. I don't remember what stats he had towards the end of that at the end of that game. I'll definitely find out. But I know he was clearly struggling towards the beginning. Either way, though, here we go. Map number two, E United stomping ground being that of Vascar, and more importantly, their map pick tonight. You've already taken your opponent's map pick. That should give you all the confidence in the world. But here we are, heading it into map number two. TJ in his typical spot on tank. He's a dominant force. He's very difficult to be dealt with at this point. But Prey's going to have to find a way. The shots from Praise just trying to look over to TJ. It's a 2-2 on both sides of the map. E United's actually pressuring. Penny is pressuring up on Hefe. It's almost like they call him out and they know to be able to push him. They know that they have the ability to try to take that 1B around the map, try to put pressure on him. Hefe rotates over to help in depth. That flash was so perfect! Oh my <laughs> god! I, at the top of my lungs, I don't care who I wake up. I'm probably... My wife. <laughs> she, I, she's got to be used to it by now, Colin. Come on. Sound, sound, soundproof panels, brother. Soundproof. <laughs> sound, well, then hopefully, if you can break through the soundproof panels, my goodness, you might as well be an opera singer at that point. Powers handles TJ without question. Enzim now might be the next victim as the United does have the two to one split. They are slowly collapsing in onto Bravo. Player three Solars needs to hold his ground or else you're going to have a wave of United members pushing in on that. They will try to break out with player number one, but Solars ends up falling. TJ is going to force the 1v against Kenny. And if Kenny can win that, Hive could be in very real trouble here shortly on B. See, and Kenny wins. Of the tank. No, he doesn't, Powers. excuse me. Power's gonna get that kill. Now Power shot over the cover. Hefe tries to slide in. Oh God, Hefe goes down. The Power's just racking up kill after kill here on Vascar as you have to continuously take fights around the map. You can see Hive seeing that their next target probably has to be the Sea Hill as they know that two players are already waiting at B. They don't know what the defense is looking like over at A. Just yet, Explosive is gonna be there along with Kenny. And there they go. They're gonna go for a full rotation. It's gonna be two, maybe even four. Here's a third player. They might rotate the fourth in it as well. 
EJ's gonna be the tip of the spear. He's pushing in on explosive. It doesn't hit the back A. Solars will finish him off. Triple cap domination being threatened momentarily, but a couple of kills coming through for TJ. Will probably prolong this round. Prolong, but for how long? At this point, Hive does take the two to one. Even so, you already know E United is going to have that win condition with just A alone. And it's a long time to hold on for 38 seconds, but it is a possibility. And uh, with that being said, Player 9 is coming out of the spawn. He's trying to figure out how to work his way through, but Player 4 is going to blindside him, and he will. He's out of the way. And uh, Hive might have just been blessed a potential great situation if they can push in onto Player number 7. Powers has to hold his own here. You see Powers just trying to get these shots down. He's going to roll over here. He hits Solis with oh. an absolute brick, but the one-shot chunk for Solis comes through. Here comes the United back off a of respawn. They're going to go for this retake of their home hill. They've got one player still sitting in the cubby trying to get this recap. They need to get it off, and they need to make sure that they play a little bit of defense here. Down to seven seconds. You're going to see Hive trying to fly into the hill. They got it one more second to get in there. Nobody's in the hill. That's going to be it. One to zero. E United, they start off right where they left off in map number two with a 1-0 lead. But a lot more of a competitive round. A lot more of a competitive round without question. Even though the scoreline was still very one-sided over towards E United for the majority of the round, even up until the very end, you can tell Hive was definitely doing a much better job at staying in those engagements, winning a couple of big fights they needed to, more specifically TJ taking down Kenny. That was a must win because you can see the pressure from E United on tank. That was a big fight that was taking place. If Kenny lo or wins that engagement against TJ, that's a domination, but TJ kept the game alive, or the map alive, I should say. Either way, though, a loss is a loss, and I know Hive isn't happy with that result, so they're going to try and find a way to fight back if they possibly can. And if I'm not mistaken, too, E United was also on the side that is technically harder to win or not as coveted to be on. So E United has set themselves up very well to potentially take this map. Raised with one back A, we're gonna kill an explosive is down, but now they're gonna be able to pressure up on Enzim. Explosive with the up A will get him and he'll be able to rotate back and pick Praise back up. Four players still alive for E United. Only two left for Hive on the map as they come off of respawn. I love that play by Powers. He gets the decap. He sees they're coming off of respawn, and he gets the hell out of Albuquerque. He said, Bugs Bunny might have made a wrong turn, but I'm going right back to my spawn to make sure nobody can pressure that A hill. Kenny is going to get revived. They don't get the cleanup on him either. Hive needs to learn to start healing feeling out these kills a little bit more. They're getting towns where they're not able to pressure up. They're not able to finish these off, which is really making life so much harder for them. And now it's gonna be a 2v2 over the tank. First down comes through onto Praise. You're gonna see, I believe, Kenny has the secondary of Praise. He was looking at the six. Kenny's gonna to try to rotate over across the mid map. He's gonna fly out. This is gonna be a 3-2 at the home hill hive. Target my mark. We've got a 3v3 as uh, Enzim is going to rotate in, so it was a 3v2 for the moment. But with the United, though, they do have the point lead. Taking this hill would put them right back in the driver's seat. You also have the 1v1. Hefe is going to be going against Praise on the opposite end on tank. That engagement is well underway, and it looks as if Hefe does drop in that 1v. So at this point, United has a very real chance to push up. But you can already see Hive, though, with the aggression. They knew once that 1v1 was done, they had to push up, take control. They couldn't sit any longer. They're going to take back the 2-1 to one and uh, slowly but surely, right, take that point lead. See now the Boltock of Powers trying to get some damage, but he hits one with a little up A reaction shot, however you want to look at it. Now he's going to push into that A hill, try to get the shots on, won't be able to get anything just yet. Not going to be able to get these kills to come together, so Hive is holding court at E United's home hill. You can see them continuing to hit these shots. Fighting off the world, it seems like, as they come up those steps. That's not going to go well for them. They get cleaned up and cleaned out. They still have a little bit of a point leap that's going to disappear here in the next couple of seconds. It definitely should. And this has been a long grind for Hive, but it's going to pay off, obviously, if they do, in fact, win this map. It's going to come down to E United pushing forward in these big engagements. This is going to be a 2v3. This isn't going to be easy by any means, but Kenny's going to pick up one. Hold up a second. Explosive will pick up another, but Enzim being the unsung hero will keep A in the possession of Hive. Hefe will also win his engagements against Praise. And finally, Hive will answer back. And I say finally because I'm also adding the training ground maps or training ground rounds that uh, occurred just a little bit earlier, but that's a nice win. That ties it up one-to-one. -one. That's a solid uh, answer back, in my opinion. So, 
earlier, you remember me saying that uh, you yeah, really had to have players like Jay has to pop off for Dream Conspiracy to win yep. in our first matchup tonight. Mm -hmm. The same thing is going to go for Hive right now. They're going to need guys like Inzem and Solars to go absolutely nutty buddy, if they want to win this matchup. Inzem gets those extra kills at the A hill. It solidifies round two. They tie it up one to one. We need to see what the answer is from E United because again, for lack of a better phrase, and I know a lot of people might not agree with this, with the re replacement of Hefe on the Hive, E United should be able to move forward the move forward with this and be able to get be able to get these rounds pretty easily. Losing these rounds is not going to look good for E United's uh, road to dominance or road to championship caliber play. If you're yo powers why. Mm. Yo powers why. Cuz he wants the 1000. He wants to 1k. All right, he's working his way up to that. And you said nobody from E United's going to feed him eliminations. He's going to go and get them for himself. Well, you can see a prime example of that at that point. Oh, no, you don't even get a touch. They don't even get a touch. That is so tough. E United held him at the one yard line. They are angry they gave up round two. They uh, definitely are angry. That was a pretty terrible initial. But I mean, uh, by terrible, I mean. Powers sat in that corner. He was shotgunning out, his L triggering into the other corner. He said, I'm going to get this down. And then he realizes that he's getting pushed from the stairs and hits the back A to end all back A. Gets the insta give there, gets himself a little double kill cleanup. And E United now, they're probably going to upgrade to that shocker in Sydney area. They're going to go with the shock first. And now we're going to go to the opposite side, answered right on back. All right, round number three. Shocks are down. Or round number four, excuse me. Last round of the first half before we switch up those uh, home hills. Either way, though, the shocks are going to be very important to use, especially on tank. TJ is going to be one of the players to uh, potentially, or at least I'm thinking he's going to be the first one to throw out that shock and potentially engage onto player number six, who's going to be praised just on the other side. But all is going to be quiet. And, and again, that's because both teams are respecting the shock that is in the opponent's hands. But there's the first one. It's going to be out. That's actually going to put Praise in a tough spot. He's forced to engage. He's out of the way. Insom takes him, but the quick answer back, though. Coming out from Explosive, he's going to take the one. Can he get the second? Solars clutches up, takes him down, and Bravo goes to Hive. But over there on the opposite side of the map, United, they've taken the home hill of Hive in this round. Enemy attack. You see what's going to happen here. Kenny is going to be pushed by three different players. He drops a flash. They get the 3v1 off on him. They get the quick kill, and that's going to give them the ability to rush to this B hill. It's going to be praised inside of it. He's going to get Lancered out here momentarily by Hefe. Inzem's going to go around the 90 degree, trying to get the shots on to Praise. Praise might try to escape to the back of the tank, but not in time. Not in time indeed. And now that's going to be a big loss. I mean, sp uh, for specifically for Hive, right? Because now E United still has the point lead and Hive once again has to fight back. And they put such an incredible effort into winning that first uh, or winning the neutral hill originally. It's a shame they're having to fight back for it, but it is what it is. This is how the chips ended up falling. Explosive Lancering out as hard as he can for Solars and TJ. From the steps, though, it's going to be one member. I believe that's going to be praised, or is that going to be Powers? Either way, the whole squad is just coming up regardless. That's Explosive Praise. And then, of course, another hill going over towards the side of the United, but angled out is going to be Kenny. Yes, be careful here. He's going to be in a 1v2 momentarily. Player 7 joins into the mix, but Hive can't catch a break. Yeah, Hive cannot catch a break. Kenny tries to hit that back A. You see Inzem go wide. I believe there's somebody over the top, but there's the smoke out. Here comes the rotation in to go for this revive. Here comes Inzem flying through the smoke. He's going to get shot and get put on the skates as he goes back to the other side of the tank. And now Explosive is pushing up. Inzem back cubby corner. He's going to be looking over the top. Not going to be able to get anything going just yet. Explosive will decide to take this fight again. Hefe just using his Lancer to the best of his ability to stop anybody from E United getting into this fight. Inzem holding court with his right hand, just doing a picture perfect job here. Not allowing anybody from E United really to push in. Powers with another back A there onto Hefe, gets that kill. I mean, just a fantastic job by both of those players from E United to hold court over the B Hill. A shock right there on TJ's feet, but that'll stop him from coming up the stairs, but not. I think at this point, 
It's just a little bit too late. Kenny's gonna go ahead and give him the countdown, or at least, I guess, give us one countdown. It's hard to count the three sometimes, but, uh, and, and I can relate to that. I, I totally can. E United, 3-1 lead, two rounds away from winning the series 2-0. Three to one, two rounds away. E United looking to get this 2-0 victory and, and Powers 11 kills in this one is not slowing down at all. I don't think he can. You don't think he's allowed to slow down? You don't think he has a gear less than fifth? Yeah, at, at this point, I really don't. I mean, the first one to reach a thousand eliminations, more importantly though, I, I you know. That's just the fun thing we came up with, but I don't think Powers legitimately knows how to slow down. And that's not a bad thing. That's not a dig either. You know, that's not a dig whatsoever. Once again, now, or excuse me, going into the second half, still the tank battle underway. Praise being more aggressive this time, though, than he typically has been. Not worried about the shock at all. TJ will fall. The shock actually is up in the air, and that's unfortunate. It looks like both shocks are, in fact, totally not usable, and the domination potentially coming through. Powers, he's going to be in a 1v2. We're just trying to keep these hive members at bay. That's going to be Enzim and Co. You see Powers shot over the cover is going to have a lot of damage on Jeff. He's trying to find that angle there on to Enzim. Not going to be able to get anything just yet. Enzim's going to catch explosive sliding around the corner, and Powers tries to move in and get the kill on Enzim, but TJ becomes the sacrificial lamb. <laughs> sacrificial lamb. I don't know if TJ ever expected to be called that, but it is, it, it's an accurate representation of what just took place. Oh, nice elimination from Praise. He'll get angled out with the Lancer from Enzo, but fair enough. Getting a trade is a trade. Efe also drops. And puts the man advantage back into E United's hand. That there's the finish. Thank goodness his Enzim is going to be in a tough spot. 1v2. He's going to get angled out. You'd have to think. Well, he picks up one. Maybe not. I'm counting my chickens before they hatch. His explosive puts the pressure. The rest of the cavalry coming through. And now explosive. The shoe's on the other foot. He is now the one trying to run away. The Hefe will move inside of the home hill once again. Finish off the cap. Two to one hill advantage in favor of E United. As Praised will bounce around toward the tank side. They're going to call him out. They're trying to figure out where this rotation of E United is going to come from. And I think you see one player already. TJ is going to the opposite side of the map. To play defense at that e-hill in case all things uh fall apart flashes out solars will roll back he's got inzem behind him kenny with lancer out three players from hive are stacked up bottom of those steps praise will move into that back cubby and he's going to be overwatch right now with the lancer he's not going to be able to do him anything he's not going to be able to do anything really except sit on that cover and allow for his teammates to play guardian angel and if anybody gets damaged enough they're able to get those shots on you could get that kill. There's a big 1v1 on the opposite side of the map between TJ and Explosive, by the way. Shock out, headshot for T4 Powers is trying to get this kill to finish with the Voltok. Still adding in damage, but not enough at all to get that kill. Not at all, man. And another round looking like it's going to be chalked up to the way of E United. They're just playing. Oh. <laughs> you know, honestly, it's not the worst thing in the world, <laughs> given how the scoreline currently is. You know what? I'm going to let that uh, be left up to production <laughs> at that point. Well, I know these for sure are going to count if he can finish them off. Oh, never mind. <laughs> he, he wanted them. He was hungry for them. But hey, you know, imagine that if, if uh, taking down your own teammate actually counted. Things get wild. You know what? It would get a little wild, a little toxic, a little wild, a little out of pocket. But you know what? Might be fun in some instances. You see praised and somebody else running out of spawn 1v1 every single round. <laughs> <laughs> to start off. Hey, look, whoever spawns in the back is probably getting at least one guaranteed kill. I'm going to go ahead and say it. You'll see a lot of back spawns kills. Uh, just, just shoot up the leaderboard, baby. <laughs> Could you imagine? Who would be the thousandth kill, though? In my, in my opinion, that'd be an honor. To them, though, I'm, I'm sure it wouldn't be. But to me, I'd be like, hey, man, look, I was a thousand clean kill. All right. Hive's in trouble. They're down already a map. Now they're also down one to four. And uh, it's it's been looking it's been looking pretty rough. Let's see if they can answer back in this situation. Spread across the map, they'll finally converge, potentially push three strong on towards F. United is going to recognize this and player six around, but uh, then they send two players to D. So it looks as if they're going to be set up to protect this two to one hill advantage. Yeah. 
some fire from Explosive, trying to check those players as they come up the hill. Who got next? What a, a, the revive, yes, you're guaranteed to get one kill if somebody goes in for the revive, but you can get that easy trade out, thankfully, with Hefe. Hefe shots over, and he gets snuck by Kenny, and now Kenny has a full flank on these last two players. They need to push up. They've got to get into this next fight very quickly. TJ bouncing around, trying to find somebody, but he's going to get 3v1 taken down. 2-1 to one hill advantage in favor of e United. They are going to amass a point lead, and they're already up 4-1. to one. Yeah, uh, it's going to be, again, a tough spot for Hive to kind of work through, figure it out. E is going to be in their line of sight. It's going to be up to uh, Powers and Explosive to kind of keep them at bay. Possibility is absolutely there, though. A lot of open ground. They've got to try and alleviate some pressure from those two players. And the way they go about it is, is not going to be as easy and clear cut. They will, in fact, get the decap. That's going to have to be it for the time being. They know they have to deal with powers and co. Powers will back up, create some spacing. In the meantime, though, player three is going to be challenged. That's Solar. Solar's now 1v2. Nice shot onto one, but not going to be enough to handle both of them. Hefe now is going to join into the mix. Again, another tough spot. Solar's was just in. And uh, he's going to go ahead and back off and not concede it necessarily, but just maintain his life. Wait for his team and his solos to get back in. Looks dead to me. See Enzem trying to shoot on to Explosive as he comes out. That's going to be that easy pick there as they get the 2v1 just outside the spawn. And another player spawns up. That's Powers. I don't know if you want to wait around for Powers to try to get this fight out. Powers going to be in a 1v1 against TJ. Bouncing around. Two old teammates. Now enemies will fight off into that home hill. They're going to get another kill there on Powers. But over the 200-point threshold, a couple of breaks might save e United in this round because you can see they're already on the E hill. Nobody's at the home hill of e United just yet. So. They're going to be able to try to keep this point lead going. They're up 30 points, give or take, based on... Now, never mind. Hive doesn't get any points. They're not getting any more. That's it. Taylor, take us home for tonight, baby. 5-1 victory coming out for E-United. Total series count, though. Map count 2-2-0. Two, two, no more undefeated teams, ladies and gentlemen, when it comes to Pro League here in Split 2. Phase 2, that era is over with. E-United stacks another win in their book, in their corner. And uh, honestly, well done. They looked absolutely incredible. Prey 16-8 leading the charge there in the stat line. But overall, though... Uh, let's let's uh, you know bring it back down, kind of sober it out. When it does come to Hive, obviously the new addition of Hefe, or at least Hefe joining back. I, I say new addition. He's been there before. It kind of seems weird to say new addition, but I mean, still though, he is a new addition at least as of recently. Um, he understands his position. He knows what he needs to do. He's not trying to be anything special other than who he is, and I respect that as much like what TJ needed to do whenever he replaced Mental. Uh, again, with the, with some of these rosters who... Uh, actually, I think the only team to win today who didn't make or who made a roster change was uh, VQ, and they beat Rebel. So that, that was the only one. But again, it, you add a new gear into the, into the machine, a new, another new cog into the machine, there's some learning curves and you have to then readjust. You have to change the way you think about how you play as a team. And I don't expect some of these teams to get it together in, you know, until we get closer to major time. That's just me being realistic. And, and but you've hit the nail on the head. And again, this is where this is where people have to understand going into these situations, having to make a, having to make a change, having to make a team change. You have to start working your ass off. And Hive did that, and they ended up getting a mid-split playoff win under their belt when nobody really saw that coming. Nobody went into that mid-split playoff. I didn't hear anybody outside of the guys on Hive saying that they were the favorites or that they had the best chance to win that tournament. I saw a lot of E Uniteds. I saw a lot of Pittsburgh Knights. I saw a lot of Nobles. I didn't see a lot of people. And when I say a lot, I only saw the people from Hive say that they were going to win it. And they proved it by working literally themselves to the bone to win that mid split playoff and they got to do the same thing now to find themselves in the same type of situation going into that major yeah and it's not an easy thing to do it's not but it, it's something it's a necessity it needs to be i say necessity sure you can just you know lay down and, and die for, as you like to say you know or as you said earlier tonight but uh i, I know they're not going to be satisfied with that 
uh, being, you know, in the position they are, being a team that they are. But uh, again, it's not going to be easy. You have to really grind, you know, put your put your nose to the grindstone. That's just the reality of it. But, you know, it, it is what it is. It was a showing from Hive tonight. And I think more so it shows, you know, they are going to have to work extra hard now as opposed to, I think, before where it came a little bit easier. But that's just the way of the world. That's the situation that we are currently in. But again, congratulations to EU United. They played very well. I am impressed. Powers didn't pull off a crazy amount of eliminations, but I believe he still held on to first place spot. But I do think he's got to be a bit careful because he's got some people definitely looking to catch up to him. The cells, monkeys, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So we'll see if he can hold on to it, but not a bad showing tonight overall. And again, I think, I think the thing that uh, people forget or people don't realize about powers in e united and i think it'll come to fruition more often than not e united will they don't they're not going to care about a kill leader championship trophy they're not sure. going to and powers i guarantee you he could care less if he gets to a thousand first or if he has the most at the end of the split what powers wants is that championship what mm. e united wants is that championship they're not going to feed him kills they're not going to pad his stats. They're going to say, look, we're going to do this the right way. And we're going to play hard each and every round, each and every fight. And we're going to make sure that we come away from this with a chip at the end of this. Because if anybody has a chip on their shoulder right now, it's those boys, especially mm. explosive. Because you come off of a dynastic roster in Gears 4 where I believe you only lose two events, if I count correctly. It's incredible. To where he literally has to watch... Somebody he booted from his team after his first event loss in Kenny win every single event of season one. Granted, two of them are with you, but you had to watch him go over with reciprocity at the start of Gears 5 after you win that. You win that beautiful pro league. Shouts out to you, Explosive. You and the boys on Tox, you win pro league. And then when the real strategy starts, them open brackets come into play and you go to those majors. Kenny and the boys from reciprocity along with Powers wins those first two. They come over and help y'all win the second two when it's still 5v5. It goes to 4v4. You don't have the success going into that first major where you lose to Vank. Or excuse me, when it's still 5v5, you lose to Vanquish. All they care about is getting back to that throne, getting back to yep. that echelon. So. Powers is going to have a crazy amount of eliminations, but not one of them is going to be fed to him. I don't think he gives a rip about how many he has at the end of the day. Oh, hundred percent. You know, and like I said, that's just a fun stat that yeah, we yeah. brought up, but at the end of the day, you know, it is United who the only goal in mind is to be champions, you know, miss, but playoffs third place. They're not happy with that. That is just not going to cut it. Second place. Absolutely not. And for them, I think that'd be worse than even getting last place at that point. First place is the only thing that they're going to be satisfied with, but that's the mentality you have to have. If you want to become a champion bottom line period. And nobody knows that better, obviously than those four men on that roster. Uh, but United, they're looking incredible. And I think at this point, United is definitely one of the best teams, if not the best team currently in the league, albeit probably that aside from Pittsburgh Knights, who I'm sure those two are going to be going at it neck and neck throughout. Uh, they won't play each other again, but granted in standings, I expect them to be very, very close.